Hey everyone, my name's Shara. I'm one of the pastors on staff here, and I'm so excited to be with you for another one of our weekend services. If you don't know, I have a two and a half year old daughter named Raylan, and she's hit that phase where she's trying to avoid going to sleep at all costs. I mean, she wants water, she has to go to the bathroom, she needs like a 17th animal on her bed to suffocate her while she sleeps. Um, anyways, one night, um, I look on the monitor, she's not in her room, and I hear a squeaky loud scream. And so I run over and I find her inside her closet, and she's like, mom, mom, there's a, there's a ladybug. And I'm like, what? I look, there's no ladybug. There was a giant cockroach belly up with its legs flailing everywhere. And she's freaking out. So I tell her, get in your bed. I grab a paper towel, squash that bug. And as I'm taking it to go put it in the trash can, she's like, mom, 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 let me see, let me see. She like needed to see to make sure it was dead. And then she needed to get out of her bed and go check the area that it was in her closet to make sure it's gone even though she already saw it. Well, I tell you the story because a lot of us, like my two and a half year old daughter, fall into this category of to believe something as true, we have to see it like right smack in front of our face. Like picture it or it didn't happen. Like I need to see it. Even if it's on Instagram in a picture, you know, I need to see it personally, personally for myself. And we live in this culture and even just as sinful human beings where we believe that that we have to see something for it to be true, to believe in something. I mean, it, it makes sense. Like we have an Instagram world, we have fake news, we have stuff spreading everywhere that it's hard to discern what's true and what's not. And so we want something smack dab in front of us for us to fully 100% believe. And today in our series, What They Never Told Me When I Became a Christian, we're gonna be talking about this idea that it's gonna be hard to believe in something you can't see. Um, and I'm talking to two people today, two different type of people. The first one is, um, maybe you're just learning what it is to be a Christian or you're not a Christian yet. I know our series is called What They Never Told Me When I Became a Christian, but you may be watching this not fully a Christian yet. And for you, it's hard for you to believe in God that he exists because you can't sit down with him and have a coffee date one-on-one -on -one or play video games or fist bump, you know, um, with masks on, of course. Um, <laughs> but it's hard for you to believe that he exists because you can't sit down next to him. And a lot of times people will say the phrase, you can't prove that God exists. What they actually mean is you can't see him face to face. And that's true. The Bible talks about in um, 1 John 4 that no man has seen God face to face because he's sinless and he's perfect and we're full of sin and imperfect that we would die if we saw him. And so, yes, we've, we no one has ever seen God the Father face to face. Um, but that does not mean we can't prove his existence or have evidence for him through nature and science and logic. I encourage you, if that's something where you're at, to go over to the North Coast website, the main website, and there are some North Coast classes recorded online, and there's one of Christopher Hilkin for two and a half hours long, giving evidence for God and the existence of God. Um, and I encourage you to check that out. But you know what? Even if you got that, you may fall into that camp of like, yeah, I see all that, but until I see him face to face, it's, it's hard for me to believe. Maybe that's you. The other person is maybe you are a Christian. You know God's real and there's really no changing your mind on that. But it's hard for you to believe in the supernatural world, in the spiritual world, in, in prayer, in angels, and the fact that God's in the midst of your suffering, that God's working through your life. It's, it's hard for you to believe. Just trust God because you can't see those things happen or you can't see God face to face. And it may be hard for you for a number of different reasons. Um, one of those reasons may be doubts, your own doubts. Travis talked about that at the very beginning of this um, series. Um, and sometimes when we have doubts, I don't know if you've done this before, but I've done this growing up as I was um, growing in my faith. I remember saying, hey God, like if you're real, move this pen 10 feet. Okay, eight feet. Okay, six feet. Okay, just an inch and then I'll know you're real. Or, okay, God, if you like come down on a pillar of smoke right now and like a cloud with rainbows, then I will stop sinning. I'll stop lying, stop cussing, stop looking at pornography. Then I'll know you're real and then I'll actually believe by like living it out, you know? But until then, I'm kind of not sure. Or maybe it's not doubts, but maybe it's um, you're going through something difficult, pain or suffering. Um, I gave a talk on this in this series a few weeks ago and how sometimes in the midst of pain and suffering, it's so difficult to believe in God, believe that he's good, believe that he loves us, believe in the plan because we can't see the plan. We can't see him sitting there next to us as we're crying our eyes out. We can't see the angels protecting us. Honestly, that's where I'm at right now where there are moments where I'm woohoo on fire and there's times where it's hard to believe. 
because I can't see him sitting there as I'm weeping. And that may be you. Maybe for you, um, prayer is hard because you feel like you're talking to air. You feel weird. You feel a little mystical and magical. Maybe um, you're having a hard time believing because you can't see God because someone has mocked you. Oh, you believe in this God you can't even see. You don't even know him. Like, I've been there before. I remember in college, um, our Christian college would take like a table to the university next to us that was a non-Christian college. And we would give free coffee and donuts just to start conversations with people. And I had a whole conversation with someone on um, proving the evidence for God, very similar to what um, Chris Hilkins' classes that I encourage you to check out. Um, we went through all of the proofs and I'm like, see? And they're like, nope. Until you can put him right in front of me, I don't believe. And that may be you right now. See, there's it's hard to believe when we can't see. And that's a real thing, and that's okay. That's okay. But that's where faith comes in. That is where faith comes in. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So you don't need faith if you have the substance before you. Faith is used for things you can't touch, you can't see. And that's why we have faith. But see, a lot of people think, oh, as a Christian, you guys have this blind faith. You're just like, whatever. Or you have to take a leap of faith. I love this phrase that a lot of um, our pastors use at this church. And it's, run the ramp of reason before taking the step of faith. God never told us to have blind faith. God never told us to just like, jump for it. No, faith does not contradict reason at all. It simply goes beyond it. See, um, when we talk about the Bible, if I have to prove the Bible, I can tell you that the Bible's real. I can tell you how many people it impacted. I can tell you um, about how it's accurate. Um, I can tell you all this proof that it is true. But to believe that it's the word of God requires faith because you're believing what the Bible says. See, it doesn't contradiction. It, go it doesn't contradict it. It simply goes past it. And faith, it's not this bare belief, this intellect or just intellectual understanding. It's a willingness to trust in, to rely on, to cling to. And faith comes with a blessing. Faith comes with a blessing um, that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So um, what they never told me when I became a Christian is that it would be hard to believe in something I can't see. I don't know if you've ever watched the movie The Polar Express before. But that can be us a lot of times. Maybe not with Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy, but with God, with the Christian life. Um, and there's a scene where they're on top of the train and he's talking to, like, I don't know if it's a ghost or whatever it is. And he's on there saying, seeing is believing. It's a fact a lot of us believe. A fact that we think is true. We believe that seeing is believing. But it's a myth. It's not true. See, even Thomas in the Bible, Doubting Thomas, who um, was one of Jesus' disciples after Jesus died um, on the cross and he saw it, he did not believe that Jesus rose again, even though all the rest of his disciples saw it. He did not believe even though they told him about it. He was like, until I touch his um, scars and um, see him in person, I don't believe. And thankfully, he got to see Jesus and he believed and that's awesome, but we don't get to see Jesus. Um, he's not living here on earth anymore. We don't get to see God the Father in person. So what do we do? Well, this is where Jesus talks in John 20, 29. He says to Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. See, this verse tells us two things. You can believe without seeing. And the second one, you are blessed if you do. See, seeing is not believing. A lot of us would say, if I could just see Jesus right now, I would believe. Well, the truth is, if you saw Jesus, you would kill him. Whoa, Shara, that's kind of extreme. It's honest, it's true, because thousands of people saw Jesus, saw his miracles in person, and they, either want, they were the ones that yelled to crucify him, to crucify him. Why would we be any different? Um, the Bible is very clear about this. There's a parable, a story with a deeper meaning, that Jesus tells about Lazarus and a rich man. And um, the rich man dies, and he ends up in hell, and he's having a conversation saying, hey, let me go back so I can tell my brothers to like not end up here. And um, he gets a response saying, they have Moses and the prophets, basically the Bible, let them listen to them. And he's like, no, 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 if they see someone from the dead goes to them, then, then they'll be convinced, then they'll repent. And the reply is, mm -mm. if they did not listen to Moses and the prophets, the word of God, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Jesus is super clear, seeing isn't believing. 
So why, but those people who saw Jesus, why did they believe in Jesus if seeing isn't believing? Well, there's people who see, saw Jesus in that time, like the Pharisees, and chose not to believe because they didn't want to. They don't want to surrender their life. They don't want to be proven wrong. But you guys, seeing is not believing. Jesus is clear with us that hearing is believing. In Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Faith comes from hearing. Um, so there's a story of the woman at the well in Samaria. Um, maybe you've heard about it before. If not, check it out. It's really awesome in John 4. And she goes and shares her testimony of like, I met Jesus, and like he knew all this stuff about me. Like my life has changed. I've surrendered my life to him. Like he's, it's, it's awesome. And she shares her testimony and what's crazy is in this chapter, like, there's no recorded miracles in the Bible of, like, Jesus doing these miraculous miracles of, like, here, let me prove to you all so you can believe. Let you see so you can believe. Um, but the people hearing this woman's testimony and hearing the word of God say, we no longer believe just because of what you have said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Hearing is believing. Well, if you, contradict, uh, if you um, contrast it with the next village that Jesus goes to in John chapter 4, there's an official that's begging Jesus to come heal his son. And it's like, you need to actually like go there and do it. I need to see it. Um, like if you just say he's healed, I, no, 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 you need to go do it. I need to see it to believe it to happen. And Jesus replies saying, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. See, Jesus even said like, that's what you want. You want seeing is believing, but hearing is believing. And hearing comes through the word of God. See, our faith is formed, our faith is strengthened, not in our eyes, but in our ears. See, when it's hard for us to believe in something we can't see, we forget that Jesus told us how to believe, how to trust, how to have faith. And it's by hearing the word through the Bible. We have the Bible. And there's verses in the Bible like Hebrews 4 and um, in Timothy that says the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, training, and righteousness. When we hear the word of God, it transforms us. It strengthens us. It helps us to believe when it's hard to believe in something we can't see. So I want to encourage us on three things that we need to, to open when you're in this place of it's hard to believe because I can't see God right here. I can't see his angels. I can't see the answer to prayer. I can't see what the plan is. I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can't see if he exists. When it's hard to believe, here's three things I want to challenge you to do. The first one, open your ears. Open your ears to the word of God. If you're struggling to believe, are you even trying to hear? Are you reading your Bible? Are you listening to sermons? I mean, Taylor gave a, a message a few weeks ago on how reading the Bible may be difficult, but he gave us a lot of really cool tips on how to dive into the word, how to soak in the word. I mean, um, Taylor literally opens his ears and listens to the Bible being read to him. You want to be soaking in the truth soaking in that's how your faith will be strengthened see instead of looking to the heavens like god send down a pillar of smoke and fire and then i'll follow you look to the word look to the truth second thing open your heart to the holy spirit allow him to be the one that guides you allow the holy spirit to guide you um you can either be guided by the holy spirit or you can be guided by your flesh what you want the desires of this world and most of the time almost not all of the time your flesh will lead to sin where the Holy Spirit will guide you to truth and to righteousness. And what's crazy, this verse says that Jesus said it ex exactly, describing the Holy Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, so that he will teach you everything and remind you everything I've already told you. See, the Holy Spirit is just going to help you remember what you heard because believing comes from hearing. And so the Holy Spirit will help reveal to you the truth of the Bible, not just your feelings and emotions, which go every other way, especially as a girl, or if you just like ate something bad and now your feelings are completely off we want to open up our hearts to the holy spirit to be the one leading us and the third one is to open up your eyes now you're like wait what i thought you said seeing isn't believing yeah seeing is not believing but we can open up our eyes not to see god like face to face with us like coffee date video games fist bump with masks on you know <laughs> um but we can open up our eyes to seeing god every day working you see there's a lot of times you and i and i do this a lot when i pray for something and then that prayer is answered and i'm like oh sweet but I don't even acknowledge that it's God who answered it. Or uh, I've had some friends who've gotten in a bad car accident before and like this crazy thing happens and they're still like alive, but their car's like smashed in total. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness for the mechanics. 
Or thank goodness for God's angels coming and protecting them. Thank goodness for God's power in that moment. Or when someone's healed from a disease, sweet, diets are rad, gluten-free, that's how you don't have diseases. Or God did something. Or even on the opposite, it's hard to see God sometimes or open up our eyes and to see God when things don't go the way we plan, when suffering happens. See, we can open up our eyes to see God in the everyday things. I want to encourage you guys. I'm going to leave you with this verse, um, 1 Peter 1.8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you're receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Guys, when it's hard to believe because you can't see, which it will be, and that's okay, I encourage you to open up your ears, open up your heart, and open up your eyes to soak in the word, to soak in the truth. Because it talks here in this verse I just read you, 1 Peter 1, 8, that you're filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. See, when you are strengthened in your faith, when when stuff comes at you, you have joy. When worries come at you, you have joy. When, when the world tries to take you down or try to tell you that he's not real because you can't see him, you can have joy because your faith has been strengthened through hearing the word of God. I encourage you, open up your heart, open up your ears, and open up your eyes to the everyday moments of Jesus. Let's pray. God, they never told me that when I became a Christian, it was going to be really hard, that there were going to be some days in suffering, some days when people mock me, some days just in this journey as a Christian, Lord, that are going to be really hard because it's hard to believe in something you can't see. But God, I don't have to see to believe. I can hear your word. I can hear your truth. I can soak it in and I can be strengthened in my faith, in my faith to trust you enough to do what you say, Lord. I pray that all these students listening, Lord, can soak in your word, can soak in your truth that will strengthen their belief and strengthen their faith in you. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen.